I was minding my own business underwater when the police chief of a coastal city came looking for me. There's his stuff. He must be underwater. Well, I've got an idea how to get him. That you're a friend of mine. I'm sorry, Mike. It's the only way I can think of to get you out of there in a hurry. Well, I'm sure glad you got a good shot. You didn't think I was really trying to shoot you, did you? Look, Mike, there's no time to lose. How much air have you got in those tanks? Well, I'm practically full. What? Good. Come along with me. Why? I'll explain to you on the way. What's up? There's a kidnap ransom about to be paid. $100,000. I need you. I was being rushed through the streets in an unmarked car by police chief Al Clark. We were on our way to the scene of a ransom payment. But I still had no idea who was kidnapped or what I had to do with it. Wait here until we hear from headquarters. Now, I'm going to have to give you this quick, Mike. In a few minutes, we're going to move in on a car driven by Howard Stone, president of Stone Electronics Corporation. You know him? Yeah. Will they kidnap his son? No. This is really one for the space age. This hundred thousand dollars is not being paid to ransom a human being. It's to get back six memory tapes. Oh, the tapes they use in electronic computers, huh? Yeah, that's right. Without them, all of Stoneham's computers are dead, and they contain vital experimental data that's not recorded anywhere else. It'll take a minimum of eight months to replace them and cost over a million dollars. Now, Stoneham is so desperate, he absolutely refuses to work with us. He's afraid we'll scare him off and he'll never get his memory tapes back. What have I got to do with all this? Well, Stoneham was told to deliver this ransom money in a clear plastic box with a lead bottom. And they were very specific about one thing. It had to be airtight. You think they mean watertight, huh? That's right. I think water may be involved somehow in the delivery of this money. And if it is, you're going to have to make a die for us in a hurry. Headquarters to 001. Zero, zero, 001. Subject vehicle just parked southbound near 9th Street Bridge in the Little Venice area. 10-4. 10-4. My hunch about the water was right. You better squeeze down out of sight, Mike. Go ahead. Explain, Mr. Stone. In there. I threw the ransom in there. That's what came up. It's down there, Mike. Can you get it? I'll try it.
see what else I can find. Whoever had that money box had a start of several minutes. If I moved quickly, I might overtake him. Or them. I went all out. The canal was part of Little Venice, a complicated network of lagoons and canals. Suddenly, I saw a wall of concrete just ahead. I was in a junction of some kind. I didn't realize just how complicated it was. I rose to the surface for a better look. Canal split to the left and to the right. And another branch came in just a few feet further down. Whoever I was chasing could have slipped away in any one of several directions. It was hopeless. I gave up and made my way back to the bridge where I had started. Whoever had picked Little Venice for an underwater escape had picked the perfect place. When I first dove in, there had been no time to examine the area around the bridge. So now I searched carefully for anything revealing. One thing caught my eye. It seemed very trivial. There was just a fleck of color less than an inch long on the bridge pillar. It seemed to have a couple of tiny wavy lines in it. And an odd combination of colors. Light blue and pale green. At the scene of a crime, almost anything can have some significance. You see those funny little wavy lines? Ah, probably nothing to it, I guess. But it was right down there where the uh, box was dropped. Well, I'll have the lab take a look at it. You saw absolutely nothing else down there. Not a thing. A diver can vanish down there faster than anything I've ever seen. Well, divers. Could have been more than one, I guess, huh? No, Mike. Stoneham saw only one set of bubbles. There was only one man. And you've got to get your hands on him right away. Yeah, we've got new trouble. Well, what do you mean? Only five of the tapes were returned. The sixth one is still missing. And that's the most important one of all. Stoneham here is convinced it's going to be put on the international espionage market and sold to the highest bidder. Wow. Was that ransom money marked? No, the money wasn't marked. We do have the serial numbers, though. Now, whoever collected that money is going to have to hide it until things cool off. I got a hunch where it might be hidden. Where? The ransom was collected underwater. I bet it's still there. It'd be the safest thing for him to do. Yeah, that makes sense. Mike, you're going to need help. Unfortunately, my men don't die. There's a skin diving club here in town called the uh, Depth Divers. I'm sure that some of the fellows will be glad to give me a hand. Yeah, but can we trust them to keep it quiet? Well, what other choice have we got? It's too much of a job for me to handle by myself. Look, whatever you're going to do, do it quick, please. Yeah, you're right, Mike. We have no other choice. Go ahead and contact those okay. divers. The skin diving club called the Depth Divers was one of those small organizations where all the members chip in to buy equipment and pool it. I found the clubhouse without any difficulty. I looked idly at the club poster on the door. Suddenly, something registered, like an electric shock. The insignia was an odd combination of colors. Around it was a border, two wavy lines interwoven. The fragment that I had found at the bridge must have come from an air tank belonging to the club. Can I help you? Uh... No, thanks. I'm sorry to bother you. I was looking for uh, Owen's boat yard. Well, that's all right. You know who that is? Mike Nelson. I realize now that I'd have to do my underwater searching alone. It'd be foolish to tip off the depth divers after what I had discovered. 
I was using a sensitive metal detector. The search was long and tiring. It began at the bridge and took me in an ever-widening spiral. The canals were so complicated that I had to follow my maps carefully. Meantime, Clark's men were quietly checking on the entire membership list of the club. They were looking for someone with an unusually advanced background in electronics. Whoever had stolen those tapes really knew the score. At last, I got a very powerful signal. It seemed to be coming from the surface as well. to take a look and was glad that I had. This was where a huge power plant sucked in large quantities of water. The signal on my detector had come from this installation. about an underwater hiding place could so easily be wrong. And at the same time, my thoughts kept coming back to that area marked danger, keep out. If I were trying to hide something where no one would be likely to go, that would be the very place that I would pick. And there was good logic to it. Suddenly I knew I had to have a look, danger or no danger. I was hunting underwater for a box of ransom money and a stolen electronic memory tape of great value. My search had taken me to a dangerous area. It was the water intake for a large plant. The pumps seemed to be off. I didn't know for how long. This crime had been masterminded by someone with an exceptional scientific background, someone with a broad knowledge of electronics. For all I knew, this could be booby-trapped, and in some fiendish new way. I couldn't know what to expect. Nothing seemed to happen. began to attach a safety line in case the pumps should go on. I didn't know that the tunnel was wired to send a radio signal to a fast speedboat moored back at the depth diver's dock. I found the box immediately. This was it, all right.
I began to look the box over very carefully. I decided not to touch it before notifying Chief Clark. just missed making the arrest, which could have saved me from what lay ahead. I was free of the danger area, I thought. accident. The boat had been aimed right at me. Come back here and give me a hand. Water can't be too deep here. Get the spear guns. What about the revolver? Oh, too loud. down on me as if it had eyes. Then I understood what was hanging just below it miniature electronic device, modeled after anti-submarine sonic gear, apparently so sensitive that it could track the location and movement of an underwater object the size of a man. I didn't know that the couple in the boat were an experienced, skillful team at spear-gunning game fish. This time, I was the target.
I knew that they could keep this up much longer than I could. I had to cripple that boat somehow, to have any chance at all. Either knock out that electronic eye, or disable the propeller. The propeller was more dangerous, but that would stop the boat dead. That was my choice. My air tanks might do it for me, but without air, I would have to surface. After that, I'd make a run for it. Bring him in here. Take her on the board. I'm glad to see you, Chief. Well, those are the two who should be saying thanks, Mike. This way, they may get off for 20 years. One minute later, the charge might have been murder. All right, let's tie that boat on behind, tow it in, and get back to land. Back next week at the same time with another sea hunt story. Plan to be with us again, huh?